Hi everyone, my name is Andrew O, oh, and I am here to go over our last episode of how to integrate top tech companies. And today we'll be covering behavioral leadership. So as usual, to give you a little bit more of a background on myself, I am a product manager, former founder, and a coach. I coach on exponents and I have worked at companies such as Grab, Tech Talk, and a Series B startup called Pulong, which is a stock and crypto trading app. And I have also founded my own startups, ranging from e commerce to social to manufacturing and flying taxis. So today we'll be going over a few things. Uh, first is what is behavioral in the leadership context? Uh, what is what are the type of questions and the framework that we should be using? And we'll be diving, and then lastly, we'll be diving into each of those questions more specifically and the strategies that you should take in order to tackle those specific questions. So, uh, what is behavioral? Now, just as a recap, uh, I did cover in the last episode what behavioral is in the IC context. And there are certain interviews there that do overlap in the leadership uh, interview loops as well that you'll get at some of these companies like Meta, Google, and so forth. But I will not be covering those topics, um, given that those uh, the frameworks that I shared in those uh, in the last episode are incredibly relevant and likely still within the IC context that you would be answering that um, as well. So um, those topics include project management, product sense, and execution. Um, now I will be going over different topics here that are more specific to leadership. But before I go there, let me first discuss what is behavioral. Behavioral interviews are meant to determine how you operate and execute as a PM. And so uh, to prep for this, I would recommend getting familiar with the mission and the principles of the company that you'll be interviewing for. And you'll want to be prepared to speak on past projects and scenarios that you have been involved in. And uh, in this case, because you are uh, a leader or you've been interviewing for or you are interviewing for a leadership position uh, also prepare many stories around influencing stakeholders across the organization as a leader and so why is this important what are they assessing more specifically uh, they want to know if you can succeed in a complex political environment uh, they want to assess whether or not you have culture fit with the organization and they want to assess your leadership style all three of those that I just mentioned are intertwined. So uh, one usually fails without the other succeeding in that regard. And just to be clear, um, especially for really great companies that have a huge emphasis on culture, um, this is incredibly important because they understand that nurturing and hiring the best leaders is subjective to the personality fit of the organization itself. Um, therefore, even if you are a brilliant leader, it's really subjective to the company that you're interviewing for and the companies that you, that you used to work in in the past. Because you might have been a great leader in X company, but maybe this company that you're interviewing for, company Y, um, might not actually be a great fit for your specific personality, for your specific skill sets. Um, and that's actually totally okay. So again, leadership is far more of a delicate hiring process. Um, and there is much more rigor when it comes to just making sure that there is that culture fit that that company is looking for. Um, and lastly, who will be interviewing you specifically? Uh, this could be either the hiring manager or horizontal PMs of that level. So that could be other managerial or director uh, level PMs. So uh, this is how you should approach these interviews. There are three specific topics that are generally going to get assessed and bucketed into question types. And that includes people management, cross-functional partnerships, and operations. Now, while people management and cross-functional partnerships are a little bit more self-explanatory, Operations is assessing more of the culture fit within the company and how you're able to operate with them uh, to make sure that there's a that there is uh, some resonance with regards to you being able to succeed in this company specifically. And we'll get more into that later. 
Um, as mentioned in the last episode, your storytelling framework should be um, to answer each question ideally in two to five minutes um, using the STAR framework. Ask for time to consolidate your thoughts if you need it. Um, and I would also definitely recommend, uh, I would also definitely recommend uh, you kind of giving a little bit of a structure or framework for how you're going to tackle the story uh, before you go into it. So the interviewer kind of already knows um, how long they can expect that story to be, and they can kind of see the end as you start diving into it. Some companies, um, and again, this is more specific to the interviewer, uh, may actually require you to answer some of these questions in one minute. Um, and so the key thing for these types of interviews, especially at this level, is communication. Your communication has to be crisp. The shorter your answer can be, the better. But it's not just it about, about it being short as well. You want to just focus on the right areas. The first thing you should do whenever you ask a question is first ask yourself, what is he, what is he or she really trying to get at in terms of the goal of what they're trying to assess um, from question X. From there, you can you can pull out the right story and start crafting your narrative accordingly. Now, let's get right into it. Let's first talk about people management. So, uh, more specifically, what are they looking for in people management uh, interviews? They're looking for just some of these qualities uh, to begin with. So organizational management, how do you structure the teams? Ma people management style. So what is your style like managing a team of subordinates and people that are driving um, a lot of the IC work for you? What are your hiring principles? Um, this is a big one. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, hiring for leaders is an extremely delicate position and being able to hire really well, um, especially people that can also add to the culture of the company that you're building um, is incredibly important. And lastly, team empowerment. Uh, so how are you able to really empower the people uh, within your team? So um, there is a strategy for how you should approach these questions. Um, now, keep in mind, uh, these are, I'm going to list out some of the strategic um, tactics that you can use, but it's going to be specific to various questions. And when we go to the various questions, uh, just for time's sake, I won't be going into each question and how to answer them. But if you stick to the strategy, you should be able to uh, stay the path on how to answer the best um, on these specific uh on this on these specific questions that they're asking you so um i would recommend that you the first one of the first pieces of the strategy is that i really recommend you start with the mission and stick to the goals this is incredibly important for how to um set goals and be able to influence throughout not just your team but across the organization when you're managing a team try to keep people to their strengths as this is also going to be really key for retention, um, but also ultimately do what's best for the company. So even if one of the people on your team uh, that you've identified may be really passionate about one specific area, if you really need that person to work on a high impact project because you know this person's a high performer, um, you might want to frame the narrative um, and make that decision around uh, doing ultimately what's best for the company and achieving those those goals. But again, each situation is complex and complicated. And so uh, you would also want to just talk a little bit more in terms of navigating those trade offs. Uh, third would be to explain the political structure for context. Uh, this is a really key one. You always want to make sure that you're explaining what that structure politically is like um, in the story if it's relevant. And lastly, explaining the trade off decisions um decision making process that you have for that specific instance that you're explaining so some of the questions that you're going to get here uh include how do you structure your teams how do you hire for culture fit have you ever managed an underperformer and if you did what did you do and what is a good mission uh what's a good mission uh this may come up a little bit more often than you think so be prepared for this um this question is important because again it ties back to uh defining 
goals and setting a vision that directly relates back to that mission for the company. So uh, keep that in mind. Now, let's go over just one of these questions, uh, just so you have a sense of how you might want to go about answering these. Um, let's talk about maybe one of the most difficult discussions to have, which is about the underperformer. Um, so the question is, have you ever managed an underperformer? And if you did, what did you do? Now, this is a tricky question um, because, and I'm sure you might have seen this throughout your career, whether you were uh, operating as an IC and looking at peers, or you know, if you have been in that unfortunate position as a leader where you had an underperformer, um, that company, uh, especially companies at the top, they're going to be looking for excellence when it comes to managing underperformers. And the key strategy for a situation like this is twofold. Ensure you have demonstrated empathy. Everyone's situations are different um, and not everyone is the same. So demonstrate empathy for a question like this. Um, secondly, you would really want to be able to make sure that you have um, equality or fairness in this context. So gathering feedback from other stakeholders. So um, let's, so basically let's, let's go through like an example of how you might want to answer this. You can first start with describing the context. Describe the context of who this person is, um, how how were they hired in to begin with? Was this your hire or was this someone else's hire? As that could drastically change some parts of the narrative of your story. Um, you also want to go into then um, what was the outcome that this person was driving? Uh, well, and also what was the scope of their work? So you want to you will just want to basically get to this part as quickly as possible. Um, let's just say that this is a two minute answer because you want to focus the bulk of your response here. Um, the next 60 or 80% of this response, you want to focus on actually what you did to determine this person was underperforming. Um, and then demonstrate those qualities that I mentioned before. So, uh, you know, maybe you noticed they were underperforming. Uh, it, it might not even be from an outcome perspective. So if it is from an outcome perspective, like they're not hitting the targets, um, that's one side of that story, but maybe it could be actually this person, um, just isn't really hitting the bar, uh, from a stakeholder management, um, standpoint or from a strategy standpoint, from the cracking the purities, et cetera. There could be so many other reasons, uh, that are indirectly actually not attributed to outcome performance, but rather soft skills, uh, and hard skills, other hard skills that are maybe, uh, not living up to the standard for that person's calibration. And so you basically want to convey um, how you're defining underperformance in this manner. And you want to be objective. So talk about how you first identified this problem. Was this a problem that you noticed? Or was this a problem that you saw other people reporting? And in either context, you want to demonstrate how you have gotten feedback from that person's stakeholders to make a fair assessment. So talk to that person's engineering lead, talk to the design, to the designer that they collaborate and work with, talk to their business stakeholder, try to get a broader picture um, of this person's so-called underperformance. And then secondly, you wanna understand if this is a blip or a trend. You wanna understand if this is um, actually just a one-time thing that you've noticed um, based on previous uh, performance reviews, or if this is actually more of a trend that you've seen across the performance reviews during that person's time here. Because um, you might be a new manager that came into the company at that time, and you actually haven't even gone through one performance review for this person yet, or maybe you just came in in the middle of one. So you want to just understand what the pattern is. And once you've do done all of this, the third thing you could do is talk to that person themselves and ask them what's wrong. Uh, but of course, frame that discussion, uh, set, set the context or the setting of how you conducted that conversation. Again, uh, what's key here is showing both empathy and objectivity for how you've been able to define this person as an underperformer. Um, and then ultimately come to that conclusion, 
whether the person was really underperforming. Maybe that person was actually set up to fail because they were never really clear with the goals or their manager kept switching every every quarter or so, uh, or the strategy kept switching. And so therefore, that person just had a lot of wasted work. There are so many different reasons why this person could be considered an underperformer, and it could be interpreted by many different people. As a great leader, it's up to you to cut through the noise, digest all the information, and then come to a fair conclusion. Um, ultimately, your goal as a leader is to help people succeed, is to help the people on your team win, and to grow that talent and nurture it accordingly. Because one, one thing that could very well be a possibility is that maybe it was you as a leader that's actually mismanaged or undermanaged that employee, and therefore they were deemed as an underperformer. Um, so, you know, again, uh, could be many different reasons. Uh, just make sure that you, um, that you're encompassing all the, all the different facts and this should be the bulk of your response. So 60 to 80% of your response should be focused on just this. And then the last part of that response in your answer should be about, um, how did you handle it? What did you do? Um, uh, to turn this around. So if you did deem that this was an underperformance issue, um, then talk about that specific um, plan or extra time or focus that you're going to be spending with that person to help them turn around that performance. Um, I don't like to use the word performance improvement plan. Um, I think there's a stigma around it, uh, especially in blind and, you know, let's be real, this entire tech industry. Uh, when people use the term PIP or performance improvement plan, it's really just a sign that that leader or that manager gave up on that person. And that does not really reflect, in my opinion, a really good, uh, it doesn't really reflect a really good empathetic leader. Uh, because as a leader, you should not be giving up outright on a person. And if you do have to come to a very hard decision after that uh, extended time of focus has not been able to turn around that person's performance, you know, then just have that conversation of whether or not, um, this is just the right place for either of you, um, to, to be in, uh, in terms of you managing this person within this company or within this team. Um, and then you can come up with a specific timeline for when it might be, uh, you might have to revisit for a reality check. So that's how I would phrase a question like this. Let's move on then to cross-functional partnerships. So cross-functional partnerships, just to define that once more a little bit again, uh, this is about how you collaborate with people horizontally within your company. So if you're the PM lead, um, it's about how you might be collaborating with your design, with the design lead, the engineering lead, um, this also could be about how you're able to uh, convince upper stakeholders. Uh, so it could be your manager, your skip level, or another person's manager or skip level. Um, so this is what the cross-functional uh, partnership interview is about. Uh, it's also going to be assessing conflict resolution across different stakeholders that you've had in the past. Um, and also, really stressing communication skills here. Um, now the strategy that you want to employ here is coming across as authentic as possible. Um, this is going to be really key to um, really making sure that you're the right culture fit and that you are someone that this person wants to see uh, collaborating, working with other people within the company. Um, you also want to uh, demonstrate how you dealt with, gen with uh, different opinions across different stakeholders. So prepare those stories as well. Uh, always try to look for the root cause analysis for why people might be disagreeing with you. Um, so really I try to understand and empathize with them. What are their goals, et cetera. And lastly, just be aware and stay open um, to other people's feedback and opinions. So uh, let's go over a few of these questions. So one question you can get here in the interview like this could be, tell me about a time you had to convince someone of your point of view. Um, what's a strong point of view that you had in conflict with someone else? And tell me a time when you had a difficult relationship you had to deal with in a project that you, work, that you worked on. 
So let's maybe talk a little bit more about um, what's a strong point to, sorry, uh, let's talk about maybe, uh, let's see here. Let's talk about um, maybe one of these uh, one of these questions, which, which could be, um, what's uh, tell me about a time you had to convince someone of your point of view. Now, this is a common question that you could get either as an IC or a leader, but we're going to take this into the leadership context. Um, so in a question like this, um, I'm sorry, uh, let, let's let's scrap that. Uh, let's talk about, tell me about a time when you had a difficult relationship you had to deal with in a project that you worked on. No, 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 sorry, scrap that. Uh, let's, let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about um, three, two, one. Let's talk about what's a strong point of view you had in conflict with someone else. So in this question, um, you know, as the PM lead, you could be, uh, or the PM leader, you could be talking about this in the context of say the engineering manager, could be the design manager. Um, and then maybe in this context, we'll just take the, the engineering manager. Um, and so a classic example here could be, uh, you know, maybe you're working on a new project with this end lead, could be even be a zero to one. And this, uh, and you you guys have clearly defined the scope, you guys are aligned in the goals, but the approach of which they want to take the project is very different from how you want to take this. So, you know, especially as a zero to, from, if you're building a product that's going from zero to one, um, that's the kind of project where uh, as a PM, or even as a founder, you're gonna to wanna to be as accurate with that end solution as quickly as possible. Uh, meaning you are going to want real customer feedback as quickly as possible and iterate accordingly to be highly accurate with the end solution and then focus on scale. So you can talk about how this could have been your goal uh, and set up this as the context for your answer. Um, and Maybe the engineering manager disagrees. Uh, engineering manager wants to build a very high quality, scalable product, um, and they want they want everything to be um, in it for the long term. Very typical uh, conflicts that you're going to get maybe as PM versus that engineer. And so, um, granted the context, you can talk about perhaps you know in a situation like this how. Um, you really want to better understand why the engineering manager has so much conflict in this, even though this seems like a pretty logical thing to do. Um, you want to maybe just demonstrate how you got to understand what exactly that goal of the engineering manager really is. Um, what, what exactly is it that's causing them to differ uh, very clearly from the success of the overall project in a quicker time frame um, than than the goal that they have, because clearly there's, there's something not right here. Uh, you can talk about maybe how you talk to one of the most trusted per people on the team that's really close to the engineering manager, and um, you know maybe just have built that relationship with that person in order to get that that person comfortable enough to have the ability to speak on on the behalf of the engineering team on what's what's been going on here. Uh, and maybe in this situation, it could be that the engineering manager. Um, it's assessed very definitely from the product team. The engineers are actually assessed uh, by their leaders and in their performance reviews by the, simply the quality and the scalability of the products that they're building. They are not at all um, assessed by whether or not the end solution is right or wrong and whether or not it succeeds because ultimately that's, that's down to the PM's responsibility. Um, and so once you've discovered this as the key issue, um, me, like then you can talk about the next steps. Um, you know, maybe you can actually pre-plan uh, with your head of with your head of product or uh, with the head of engineering um, on what on basically what um, aligning on what the the real goals should actually be. What is the timeline and what is the plan? Uh, again, it could be that you want to be accurate really quickly with this end solution. Um, unless we launch into the market, we have no customer, like real customer feedback um, tested in the ocean to really determine if this is the end solution that we should double down on, on all our resources and the growth in the marketing and everything else. Uh, therefore, it doesn't make sense for us to actually 
um, you know, build uh, something of which we might have to rewrite the whole thing or jeopardize the entire project entirely. Uh, and so, you know, that could translate into like a promise whereby first three months, um, the, for the first three months, you, you want to just focus on getting the MVP out as quick as possible and iterates towards PMF uh, by the end of the three months. And after that time period, once you guys have found it um, and have, say, 80, 90 percent confidence on that end solution, you guys can then turn gears to invest more time on refactoring that code um, and and uh, and building a much more scalable solution uh, that you guys can scale and go along with. So, uh, and then of course you can then talk about how you went back to the engineering manager uh, with this plan that you might have already pre-aligned deep with your uh, with your other skip levels on, and uh, and from there talk about how you guys were able to come to a to a, to an agreement. So that's just again like a, a rough but a an example of how you could talk about um, a strong point of view that you had in conflict with someone else and how you went about to resolve it. It's showing both empathy, proactiveness, um, and a willingness to actually um, be a little bit politically savvy in terms of your approach towards getting alignment. Now, the last piece we're going to be covering here is operations. Um, Operations slash culture uh, fit. There's many different ways to call this this specific interview, um, but we can just say operating at X X company, which could be the company that you're working for. Um, now, this is basically looking for a few things. It's looking for how you operate as a leader, and what is your operating principles at the companies that you've worked at in the past. How do you take feedback from others? How you define culture? And how do you contribute to the growth of others, mainly your peers? Not it's not actually addressing um, uh, the growth of the of the people that are working under you. So you want to essentially um, take a few strategic approach uh, approaches to this kind of of uh, interview. Um, so the first is to really demonstrate a really deep reflection especially for you know like um a question about how you're taking feedback from others um or someone giving you negative feedback you want to just demonstrate that you that you've actually reflected deeply on a situation like this and what were the steps uh that you took to correct that situation uh demonstrate proactiveness in your willingness and desire to help others grow and again these should be examples of people that you have less influence over. So don't talk about, um, again, someone that, that you had managed in the past. Talk more about someone that you might have seen struggling um, horizontally from you in terms of level. So it could be a brand new design manager that's joined the company or a brand new product manager that just joined the company. Um, if you want to go with an example of you being an IC and talking to some, uh, and then um, helping another IC grow, that's also fine. And lastly, you want to talk about um, you want to kind of place a little deeper focus on how you were building relationships with that person in uh, the example question that you're you're being asked. Now, some example questions that you get out of um, out of this interview could be how you define culture um, within the organization. Tell me about a time that someone gave you negative feedback. So that could be from a manager, could be from a subordinate, could be from a horizontal stakeholder. Uh, it'll be up to you, unless the interviewer uh, dictates you otherwise. So compare those three stories for a question like this. And lastly, um, what are the top three values you think are most important in a company? Um, and so for a question like this, you again, you need to really study uh, what are the principles, the operating principles of the company? Every company has it in their handbook, uh, and it's usually public. So uh, you just want to uh, review what the mission is and what are the values of the company. Um, that and again, if it's not if it's not public, your recruiter should have definitely given you those. Um, and even 
and you might even get hit with uh, a situation where maybe it's not about the company, but rather what are just your top three values that you that you think are important as a leader. So these are basically just a few of the questions that you could get asked. Let's talk about uh, one of these questions. Um, let's talk about defining culture. So um, I might have hinted at this a little bit in the beginning of this session, but um, the way I like to define culture is that culture is the personality fit or the girlfriend fit of a company. And you are essentially um, just one of many people who are looking to interact within the personality of this organization. Um, and essentially, cult good culture and how that's defined is really the outcome of two things. One is the increase of productivity and output for the company uh, based on the operating principles that the culture personality fit it, um, has with its employees. And second uh, would be the increase of retention, the retention rate um, of the organization as a whole. Again, there are many different ways to define culture, and you can dive deeper into the ways that you de that you define it from the high level. Um, but that's essentially it. Uh, there is no right or wrong answer on culture, but it is really important to kind of demonstrate how you're thinking about it and how you're defining it, because this in itself is the culture fit into you, and this this in itself also reflects um, how you would likely hire other people or how you would uh, demonstrate or build into the culture of the company itself. So again, a very simple, but very, very important question. I can dive into tons of follow-up questions that you'll need to answer. Um, and some of those follow-up questions that Kirk had asked is, you know, how do you, how do you measure, how do you, uh, how you hire, sorry, how do you hire for culture fit? Um, how do you measure the health of the team? Uh, these are just some of the questions related uh, follow up questions that are related to culture that you, that you could get very well get asked. Um, maybe another question uh, that we can go over briefly could be, you know, tell me about a time someone gave you negative feedback. For a question like this, um, you know, obviously there are various different points in your career um, of which there are various different points in your career of uh, which you might have received negative feedback. Prepare different examples. Prepare an example from a subordinate that uh, that was working under you. Prepare an example from a horizontal stakeholder, and also prepare an example from a from one of your um, one of your managers or leaders that gave you that direct feedback. Um, now these, um, you this could be an example of you being an IC, and that's also okay if you don't have a lot of leadership experience uh, coming into this interview. But again, uh, try to try to come up with some or one of those examples uh, from you having at least managed um, a person. And essentially this um, example, uh, this example, uh, you do wanna be a little bit more blunt with it. It's the same as what I discussed in the last episode where um, it's very similar to the example of tell me about the time that you failed. The deeper or shall I say, shall I say the more ne uh, negative the feedback actually is, it's, um, it's, showing a, it's giving you an opportunity to demonstrate a few qualities. <clears throat> the, first, the, first uh, the first quality it's giving you an example to describe is basically your humility. And humility is again like a really big part of you being a leader and also demonstrating that culture fit. The second and the most important is it's giving you enough depth to then show what was the tech, what was the the key learnings or how did this personally affect you to then drive you up uh, to become an even better version of yourself than you were before you got this feedback. Um, so, you know, it could be uh, a feedback that led to your co-founder leaving you could be negative feedback that ultimately you were not actually aware of, but it was really adversely affecting the retention rate on your team, or uh, it was actually affecting the outcome performance um, of your projects. Whatever it is, 
I would recommend just be honest with it. Be honest, show humility, uh, because it's not so much the negative feedback directly that that's being assessed in a question like this. Uh, really, what's being assessed is um, what's really being assessed here is how uh, how deeply did this affect you, and how did you come back even stronger um, than you did before? Okay, so um, that would be all for today. This is part five, and then to part five of the uh, product leadership behavioral interviews. I hope you guys had a great time in this in this series uh, as much as I have, and I really hope that um, the last five episodes have provided enough value and information uh, to help you guys succeed in the interviews that you have, uh, whether that's interviewing for startups or big companies across the board. Um, if you guys have any other further questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm always here and always open to respond to questions. And I really look forward to hopefully meeting you guys one day. All right. So that's all for today. Take care and good luck on the hunts.